All right, this is going to be a very quick video. A lot of you asked about the intercooler radiator setup. Um, I'm going to do a double whammy here. Um, in my opinion, the second gen radiator is the best way to go. It's made for the engine. Then you can run all stock hoses. Everything lines up. You can run your washer bottle, the GM power wire for the washer pump will clip right on that motor and work fine. Um, shroud fits. And you can run the overflow bottle. Everything fits. And then you have room for dual batteries. And it leaves this fender well open for whatever else you want. I also got my air horn pump finally hooked up. So um, then the second gen intercooler. Piping all worked. I didn't cut any of it. The lower boots, you have to push the pipes as close together as you can without them touching. So um, just because it's a little bit tighter than the uh, Dodge truck and the charge elbow, everything fits. And all you have to do to mount it, um, I'll try to, I'll throw a picture in here in the video right now to show you. Um, you're cutting out the vertical braces that were on the core support. So you cut out those two vertical braces and then I just set my intercooler down and just give yourself some room. You can see I kind of went halfway through that. Um, then I welded um, angle iron. This is a piece of uh, inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter, eighth inch thick in place of the other vertical support. So I'm not losing a ton of strength. Then you bolt your stock Dodge intercooler mounts there. Same thing on this side, um, just cut give yourself some room you could cut it like this but then it's just going to be harder to fit in there and you're really not gaining a whole lot so again it's like halfway through this intake vent hole um, and by going straight like that i did have room this is a dodge second gen um, air conditioning condenser so um, i think that's pretty cool you can use that and it all fits in there um, for the bottom mounts all you do is take a I think it's an inch or inch and a quarter hole saw uh, there's two levels to the core support and it steps up the lower one in the back it's kind of hard for me to show you is going to be for the radiator because that's out front it's on the bottom just drill that hole and the dodge mounts will drop right in there then go on the inside it's kind of like this so your radiators down here intercoolers up here drill that inch and a quarter hole and the intercooler will drop right down in there you need it down as far as it will go so you don't i didn't weld any spacers or pipes or anything in there um, because this just clears the hood don't mind my padding up there so this radiator has to be all the way down so that just that little bit of rubber on the factory spacer is sticking up so drop that in it fits right in between the intercooler um, i slotted my holes so i can move it up and down but you really are going to need it Pretty much, you can even see I've ground my washers flat. So that if your radiator mounting bolts are right down on there, that means you're where you need to be. So this is just about flush. This sits down a little bit. If this is sticking up at all, you're gonna have trouble when you go to close the hood. So once you do that, everything just fits right in there. Hood closes, no problems. Hope that makes sense. Um, then for the body mount bolts, it's gonna be hard for me to show you. Um, they go up, sorry, they go up through here. You're gonna need to run your bolts down because you can't have any um, protrusion up through. So I just use three eighths bolts. I think they're six inches long, drop them down through. The hole where they go is reinforced with tubing on the inside so you can pinch it and it'll hold. Um, so you're gonna drop your bolt down through and you'll see the um, intercooler is like this far from touching the bolt head so um once you do that i just use an impact on them you don't even need to put a wrench on them but i did make sure i could slide an open end wrench in there in case i needed to take the intercooler out so then you'll be good to go the next obstacle you're going to have is that um if you have this style grill that mine's an 88 square body these lights are too deep they bolt to the back of the grill in the corner here and they stick out too much you won't be able to get it in and i copied this idea from someone on uh, facebook 
So just ditch these. I know it stinks because they're pretty and all that and they look original. But these sockets just are too deep. You're not going to be able to get your grill in. I double-sided taped these to my intercooler for a little while just so I could drive the thing. Um, but this, I'll show you once the grill's all on, I think is the way to go. Um, these are, I think they're called mid-turn lights off a of semi. You'll have trouble finding an amber multifunction light. That means tail and turn in an amber light. But tractor trailer companies and truck stops will carry these. These are made by Peterson. And there's the part number. I think I paid $10 a piece for them on my Amazon. There's other ones. Um, but that's just what I used. And uh, I'll show you a picture here of the wiring. They both have three wires. It's a, I just, uh, I'll just show you since, <laughs> since I'm right here. I've soldered and shrink wrapped. Um, the blue in your Chevy harness goes to the yellow. That's your turn or your hazard. Brown is your driving or marker light. That goes to black on the Patters or Peterson light. And then your black ground on your Chevy side goes to the white on your new light. The white is ground. So solder, shrink wrap, or you could do bullet connectors, whatever. And then I just use double side tape on this. I use a 3M um, automotive double side tape. It's incredibly strong. Um, even with heat, these are going to stay there. Um, you do have to sand the, the screw boss down a little bit so it fits flush against the intercooler. And then when you need to change the bulb, hit this with a heat gun and pull up and down on it. It'll pop off, put your new bulb in, and then some more double-sided tape back on there. So that's what I did. Not saying you have to, but um, it worked for me. I'll throw this grill back on and uh, show you how they look with the lights on. Here it is all done. Just like the factory lights when they're off, you really can't see too much of them. Uh, there's kind of hidden under there. Let's kick them on and see how it looks. All right, there's the marker lights. So they come on with the cab lights and the fender lights. Uh, looks like I got this one a little bit high, so I'll pop that off and um, you can usually heat that to heat them up with a heat gun and slide that down a little bit. So there's ridges on your intercooler, so you got to get it to sit just right. So uh, I actually think I like that better. I might move that one up and over, um, but you can fine tune them from there. So now we'll uh, show the other functions. So here you can see, um, even with the headlights on, the uh, blink function is nice and bright. And it's the middle of the day here, so to take a shot of it at night as well. So this would be your turn function or hazard without the headlights on. So plenty bright. And lastly, just the turn function one at a time. So that'll do. Uh, it cost me about 20 bucks.